We must filter every thought. Can you say that? We must filter every thought. Say, I must filter. Make it personal. I must filter every thought. When God saved you, he wanted to make sure that you live such a victorious life. That you don't stop at just salvation. But that your life literally goes, as the word says, from glory to glory. And from faith to faith. And from victory to victory. He wants you to live a victorious life every day. From the moment that you wake up, regardless of what you are seeing, what you are facing, or what's surrounding you. Amen? Proverbs 23, 7. And the word of the Lord says, read out loud. For as he thinks within himself, so is he. So what is the scripture telling us? That how you think within yourself, that's who you are. And I believe that we are in an hour where your thoughts need a filter. When we do not have a filter in our mind, we will allow contaminants, we will allow outside forces to begin to come in and invade, and our minds will not be productive. Our minds will not be the mind of Christ. So we need a filter in our mind. Because you know, your mind was the greatest gift that God has given you. Your mind ought to be so devoted to God. Your mind ought to be exalting God. Your mind ought to be devoted entirely to seeking God. That's why 2 Corinthians 10.5 says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, rulers, and authorities of this dark world. And then it says we bring down every thought and make it take it into captivity and make it obedient to Christ. Look what it says. It says we take every thought captive and we make it obedient to Christ. Sounds like a filter to me. We take every thought captive and make it obedient to Christ. So we have to know how do we filter our thoughts. We must filter our thoughts through the heart of Jesus, through the mind of Jesus. And when we are tempted, when we allow say things like thoughts of bitterness or thoughts of offense or thoughts of unforgiveness or thoughts of anger or thoughts of hatred, thoughts of covetousness or selfishness, thoughts of anger, thoughts of discouragement, thoughts of depression, thoughts of fears, thoughts of anxiety. When we allow those thoughts without a filter to begin to dominate our thought life, and it begins to, what happens is it begins to affect our belief system. And, and you don't function at the capacity that God has called you to function. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If we do not control our thoughts, if we do not take captivity over our thought life, then our thoughts and our lives normally and typically tend to run in a direction that it's going to go towards a lie it's going to go towards evil faster than you can ever imagine. Hear me. If you don't control your thoughts, your life is going to wind up in rebellion. The Bible says in Proverbs 23, 7, we read it out of the Passion Translation. For as a man thinks within himself, so he is. Say that with me. As I think within myself, so am I. Now Philippians tells us, the Passion Translation, chapter 4, verse 8, says the following, and you can read it with me. It says, so keep, keep, say keep your thoughts, continually fixed on all that is what? Authentic and real, honorable and admirable. Here's your filter. Beautiful and respectable, pure and holy, merciful and kind. And fasten your thoughts on every glorious work of God, praising Him always. How do we control our thoughts? Are we glorifying God with our thought life? Everything that you set out to do first started in the mind. Everything that you determined not to do started in the mind. So you can know what you're thinking by what you cultivate in your life. You can know what kinds of thoughts are being filtered and what thoughts are not by how your life is going. A lot of the things that you're living right now is first decided by your thought life. You cannot blame other people. 
You cannot blame situations. You cannot even blame your childhood. Because a lot of what you are living right now has to do with the way you think. You cannot blame your circumstances. You cannot blame, you know, people that were not there for you. What you are living today, the majority of it, the majority of it has to do with what you decided to think first. We cannot blame anybody. It has to do with how we think. Because you can grow up in the worst atmosphere. Two of you can grow up, and it is statistically proven, two people can grow up in the same atmosphere and one overcome and the other one didn't. Because it has everything to do with how you decided to think. So that means, hear me, I'm taking the responsibility off of the blame game that you've been playing. Because we cannot blame circumstances. We cannot blame what other people did to us. We have to blame our own thinking, belief system, and thought patterns. So another thing that we cannot do is that we cannot evade from it. We cannot escape. A lot of people have escapism, which is really a form of trying to deal with a traumatic event. But we cannot evade. We have to confront. We cannot blame it. We have to confront. As a man thinks within himself, so he is. You are a product right now of what you've been thinking about. And if you have no filter to your thoughts, that means there are a lot of contaminants. There are a lot of things that came into your life. No wonder you can't, I can't breathe. Oh my God, I just saw something. See, like a filter, an air filter begins to clean out the air. If you do not clean up your thoughts and filter them correctly, According to God's word, the spirit of Python begins to come into your life and suck. And that's why I can't breathe. I've got anxiety because you have not filtered your thoughts. You are a product of what you think about right now. You cannot blame anybody. Say, I can't blame anybody. And I must confront. Say, I must confront. That means that I'm giving back the responsibility to who? To you. That means it's your responsibility. It is not the responsibility of the pastor. The responsibility of the pastor is to bring you light, to bring you revelation, to remove the veil, to expose you to a glory. Why? So that you can be free. But your job is to filter it. My goodness, you can't even make coffee without filters. I dare you to make coffee without the filter. You ain't going to like it. So why do we not filter our thoughts? If you don't like where your life is right now, change your stinking thinking. Look what Galatians 5, 9, and I have to read to you the Passion Translation. Galatians chapter 5, verse 9, and it says, read it out loud with me. Don't you know that when you allow even a little lie into your heart, it can permeate your entire belief system? Somebody shout, wow. wow. One lie can begin to permeate and affect your entire belief system. People are watching me and listening to me that have an erroneous belief system that has to be completely dismantled and rebooted again. Because as a man thinks in his heart, so he is. The devil can only whisper. The only thing that the devil can do is whisper a lie. But a lie is not powerful unless you believe it. The lie is not powerful unless you begin to believe it. Philippians says it like this, chapter 4, verse 8. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about these things. Scripture says whatever is pure, whatever is honest, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is admirable. Paul is telling us how to think. Say, I have no excuse. In other words, you have the authority and you have the dominion that when something comes into your mind, you have the self-control, the authority, the dominion to determine whether something stays or goes. You have the authority to say, I will cultivate this, but I will not cultivate that. 
I will get rid of this, but I, and I will rebuke that. But I will accept this. I don't accept that, but I do accept this. I accept what the Lord says, but I do not accept that thought. That thought came from hell. That thing came from another demon. That thing, that thing came from the rulers. And I am not going to accept them. I'm not going to allow them. I'm not going to determine, and I'm not going to meditate. I have determined in my mind that I'm not going to accept them. Period. End of story. I have the power. I have the dominion. I have the authority to say it what comes in and what goes out. I have the power and I have the authority. Say I have the power. Say it. I have the power and I have the authority to determine what comes in, to determine what goes out, to determine what I accept and to determine what I don't accept. I have the power to do it. Our mind is a control tower. It's, it's the control tower. From that place, everything else happens. You are today what you believe, what you have thought about, what you have meditated on. How can I know to rebuke a thought? How can I know to keep a thought? How can I know to accept a thought or not accept that thought? How can I know if it's bad? How can I know if it's good? How do I know to understand and control the thoughts that are in my mind. How do I know if I should allow it and accept it? I'm going to give you. That's why the Bible says that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, through the tearing down of strongholds. That's why it says, no weapon formed against me will prosper or prevail. How do I filter these thoughts? Because God has given us weapons left and right. We are not weaponless. We have the weapons. Right now, there are belief systems against yourself that you have accepted for so long that God wants to break out. To filter a thought, you need to ask yourself this, where is this thought taking me? Where is it taking me? If you have to ask yourself that question, where is this thought taking me? If, if, if I keep that suggestion from the enemy, where is it taking me? If I keep meditating on that thought, where is it taking me? Every time that the enemy is suggesting something in your life, hear me, it has a high price. It has consequences and you have to pay interest, very high interest. Every time the enemy suggests something, he's suggesting it for a reason. But at the end of that meditation, at the end of that belief system, there's a high price to pay. You have to filter it. You have to analyze it. You have to know how to filter every thought. You have to filter every thought that's coming into your mind. You know, just like you make coffee in the morning and you first put that filter. You got to filter in the morning and filter every thought. Where is this thought taking me? If I keep meditating on it, where is it taking me? If I think about the thought, where is it going to take me? If I keep thinking about the anger and resentment, where is it going to take me? If I keep meditating on the thought of division, where is it going to take me? If if I keep thinking about the past, where is it going to take me? If I keep thinking about myself in a negative way, where is it going to take me? Where is the thought taking you? One song that Saul heard, one suggestion that Saul heard uh, left him feeling like less than. And you know where it took him? It took him to drive his own sword into his own gut and he died by his own sword. One offensive thought is taking you to a very high consequence that has a lot of interest that you're going to have to pay. Every thought, you have to take it captive. Where is this thought taking you? Is it taking you to your destiny? Is that thought taking you to your purpose? Is that thought, thought taking you to think higher of yourself or better of yourself? Is it taking you to love? Is it taking you to purpose or is it taking you to fear? Is it taking you to anxiety? Is it taking you to sadness? Is it taking you to depression? And all you do is meditate and meditate and stop the meditation. And begin to look at your thoughts and say, God, I need to start filtering every thought. Where is this thought taking me? Filter it. Filter every thought. Number two, how do I filter the thought? Say, where is it taking me? Number two. Will I arrive at my destination if I meditate on this thought? Will I arrive at my destination? If I keep thinking about that thought, am I going to arrive to my destination? Will this thought take me to my destiny? Will this thought take me to a 
proper godly belief system. Will I arrive to where God wants me to arrive? Where is my destination? Say destination. Does it take me to sin or is it taking me to God? Is it taking me closer to God or is it taking me further away from God? Philippians chapter 3 verse 13, Paul tells us a powerful scripture. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to, be, help me read it, yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, I forget what is behind and I strain to reach forward toward what is ahead. I press on toward the goal to which the to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Paul said something. He said this one thing I do. And then he says this, not that I've attained it, not that I've arrived because nobody's arrived until the coming of Jesus. Until you, he comes for you, nobody's arrived. So Paul says it and he makes it very clear. I haven't arrived. I'm still trying to filter these thoughts. I haven't arrived, but one thing I do do. He said, I let go of what's behind. This one thing I do, I reach toward what's in front of me. This one thing I do, I'm moving towards my destination. He said, I press on. Say, press on. You know what that word means? That word means that it's been challenging, it's been hard, and I've had to strain. Paul said, it hasn't been easy, but I press on. It hasn't been the easiest road, but I keep straining forward. I don't look back. I don't get stuck in a belief system. I, I, I have to process every thought I have to put it through a filter this one thing I do I let go of the past this one thing I do even when Bartholomew offended me this one thing I do I keep pressing toward the mark I let go of what was and I filter out the thoughts and I move towards my destiny I was struggling but I keep pressing forward I know it's been an attack but I keep pressing forward some of you are getting stuck in the attack the attack of this pandemic and I came to break that in the name of Jesus it's it's time to let go and it's time to press forward press forward press forward I know it's hard but press forward I know it hasn't been easy but press forward I know that it's been straining but press forward and keep filtering those thoughts keep filtering those stuff keep being obedient to God and keep filtering those thoughts because watch at the end of it you'll see what you thought you became where is this thought taking you? Is it adding to you, building you? Where is it taking you? What direction? You know, some of you are in the wrong direction when it comes to identity. Some of you are in the wrong direction. You came to the wrong. You came to the address called insecurity. When you should have wound up in the street called securing God. But you wound up in a different destination all because of the meditations that you have had. Do you know how many... You're lost in the world. You're lost. You're driving. Have you ever been lost when you're driving? That's the worst feeling. It feels ugly. That's why my husband drives me. Because it's the worst feeling. My GPS couldn't even find where I was at. That's the worst feeling. You're lost. You're going, I don't know where to turn. And then when you turn, there's a dead end. That's how many people are. Because they have not filtered their mind. They have not filtered their thoughts. And they're in the wrong direction. And they're lost in life. And they're not building their life. They're not edifying their businesses. They're not edifying their ministries. Why? Because you have a wrong uh, thought life. And now it became a belief system. And you're in the wrong address. It's time to get out. It's time to connect with the GPS of heaven. And let heaven begin to show you the direction is it building you or is it tearing you down number five let's go quickly where did this thought come from was it from anger where did the thought come from where did that thought come from was it from anger was it from resentment was it from the abuse was this it was a lust that you're you you now think about was it because you have a rejection problem where did it come from where is that thought coming from? Where is the source? You need to know. You have to filter it. Did it come from a traumatic event? Did it come from a breaking in your life? Did it come from an outside voice? Did it come from an enemy? Did it come from an emotion? Where did this thought come from? What's the root of this thought? What is the root? There are thoughts that come into our life. Hear me. That were Maybe perhaps in your life you were not respected like you should have. Maybe somebody did not respect you. Maybe somebody did not love you like they should have. Maybe somebody did not admire you like they should have admired you. 
Maybe the, the, the thoughts that are coming in are because of pride. Maybe all the things that happen to you. Where is the source of that thought? Where is the source of that offense? Why do you think the way you think? Why is the belief system like that? Why can't you hug? Why can't you express love? Why can't you let people in? Why do you do what you do? Why do you think low of yourself? Why do you have low self-esteem? Why do you think so bad about yourself? Why do you think you can't? Why do you feel sometimes small? Where did it come from? What's the root? Who told you? What happened to you? Who mistreated you? You have to find the source. Did you not feel loved enough? Did you not feel secure enough? Well, we're going to have to process that. And we're going to have to confront that. We can't run from that. We have to process it. We have to heal right. And then we've got to filter those thoughts. And say, wait a minute. If nobody on earth loves, loves me, there's one Father in heaven. And he's the only one that I need to love me. And if you have nobody that affirms you, but there's a Father in heaven that affirms you. In other words, look for the roots of your belief systems. Why can't you love? Why can't you get near? Why do you break away? Why the minute you, somebody gets close to you, you, you just want to run and evade? Why can't you serve God? Why? What happened to you? You gotta find the root so that you can be free. You know, one thing about my life, I'm an open book, and one thing I have learned from my past is I never, one, put up walls. I am never gonna let, because somebody betrayed me and somebody hurt me, it is not the next person's fault that comes into my life to put up walls and not let them in. It is not their fault. And one thing I learned from my past is I refuse to put up any walls for anybody. I will love like God loves. And I will give people opportunities like he gave people opportunities. He sat at the table with Judas Iscariot. Knowing that he was going to be betrayed by Judas. And he's like, somebody at the table is going to betray me. I'd have been like, Jesus, I'd have kicked the guy out. I'd have said, you, you, it's you. Get out. <laughs> but Jesus does it, knowing who's going to betray him. And they're like, oh, not me, master. Oh, me, ma no, not me, master. Me, master, no, not me. And Jesus is like looking at Judas. I'd have been like, I would have been staring the guy down. I'd have been eating my bread and just like, mm-hmm. Or I would have probably gone like this, turned my chair and been talking to this group. But Jesus, knowing that, he was so free he did not permit an event change his belief system he believed what his father believed as a matter of fact when they would spit at him on his way to the cross the bible says that he kept his mouth shut he's like i better keep my mouth shut because i'm about to say something to these guys <laughs> he had such a free mindset no wonder god tells us to think like christ does we have a filter. We cannot, we cannot blame people. We cannot say, oh, well, it's because, you know, I, we, stop it. Even when it comes to the disciplines of God, how do you take the disciplines of God? Do you go, oh, I'm such a bad person. I'm so horrible. Oh, my God. Just hide me under the covers because I'm so bad. Oh, my God, I messed up again. Even how do you take correction? Do you take correction? Thank you, Papa. You love me so much. You want me disciplined in that area. Hallelujah. But see, somebody who doesn't think like that, who doesn't have that kind of belief system, you're in a wrong residence. You're in a residence called rebellion. You're in a residence and in a wrong destination. And God is calling you back home. Because if there's ever been a time you've got to think right, it's now. <laughs> it's now. Filter your thoughts. Where did they come from? Where did they originate from? What is the source of it? What's the root of it? When you find the source of why you believe what you believe, beloved, that is your road to freedom. That is your road to all the shackles to break and fall off of your life. 